Welcome to the Good Karma Sport Fishing Podcast. I'm your host, Captain Ryan Van Fleet. Hey guys, thanks for tuning in. So today is Friday, March 12th, and we are on day five of 20 plus mile an hour winds. I fished in some nasty stuff a couple weeks ago, but you know, there's a lot of things that people, guides don't talk about. Number one, you got to get your hook set accordingly. And I, that day I was just struggling, man. I couldn't get my hook set. It kept pulling. It just kept dragging the bottom. And I'm trying to fish these really small pieces of rock. And this time of year, the patchery fishing can get to be really challenging. So honestly, you got to be able to get your hook set. And that's tough to do when it's blowing 20-some miles an hour. I mean, really, it just depends on what kind of bottom you're trying to anchor in. And some, you know, it's just, and you're trying to anchor on these really small pieces of rock. So it's kind of like you got to hit like a, you got to hit it right on the, on the, you got to hit the nail on the head if you're going to be productive on a patch this time of year. So, and the bite windows are short because a lot of these fish on a lot of the patches have been hit pretty hard and they don't bite as long. Now, mangrove snappers are one fish that really can be super challenging. Now, I don't personally see a lot of mangrove snappers on a lot of patches I fish. I see a lot of lane snappers and and stuff like that. And lane snappers are, you know, they only have to, the size limits are pretty reasonable with those fish. So they can be fun. I try to scale my tackle down to like 10 pound. But also too, my clients got to be able to cast in 20 mile an hour winds, okay? So that's the thing is that the patries are highly active. It's a, It's an active fishery. And I really want my clients to fish. So that's the thing is that I want them to reel the fish in all the way. Okay? I want them to do it. I want to teach them. So what, I, what I've been seeing out on the reef lately, uh, you know, the past couple of trips I've been out there yellowtail fishing. And this time of year it could be really challenging. I mean, so what I do is I teach the client how to catch fish when they're finicky. And there's lots of different techniques and, and lots of secrets, okay? There are a lot of secrets, including the bait, like how to present the bait. Like oh, there's a whole bunch of other different, like a lot of shit that goes into it. So what I'm seeing is out there, and I've seen it on a couple different trips, where the yellowtail fishing was a little challenging. So I'm out there first. I'm anchored up. And this is two separate occasions this happened. And I get the yellowtail to go. Uh, a, a big sport boat's out there. He's watching me through the binoculars. So he must have been struggling. So he decided to come up and set alongside me. Granted, there was nobody else out there, but he decided to come up and set on me. So these are there's a lot of new 54-foot guys that are out there. And it's – it's anyway, so I'm not going to get into that today. So I'm going to leave it at that. So he anchors up on me, and the bite's kind of tough. And it has it always is in March, and you know the water temperatures are just now starting to warm up, and I anticipate the the bite will get better here pretty soon. But anyways, I'm kind of getting off topic, so I I'm finally getting a fish to go, and I'm teaching my clients the little tricks there are to get these finicky fish to eat, and I'm I've got the bait going, and so the guys anchored up over alongside me, and one of my clients goes, "Hey, why is that captain fishing for his clients?" Okay, this is my client. He's asking me that. And he's got. And then the guy goes, he's got two mates, and they're fishing for them too. I go, and then he asked me, what charter is that? Because I'd never want to book that guy. So we got a good laugh out of it. But anyway, so what I'm trying to tell you guys is, is that uh, the whole message behind this is there's lots of different charters down here. And a lot of charters feel the pressure of having to produce fish and take pictures and, you know, produce these big racks of fish for photos to sell charters so yellowtail fishing can be challenging super challenging okay so but i would rather you know my clients honestly they want to catch their own fish and they want to learn how to do it so i think that's when my client jumped in he's been fishing with me for a long time and seen that he's like wow So, and I go, well, my response to my client was, there's a lot of different people that book different charters, okay? And some people just want to, like, catch the fish and, you know, have a good time. They want to drink beer. They want to go hang out in the cabin. And that's all cool. I mean, that's that's their choice. So, and that's probably, that that might have been why the captain and the two mates were fishing for the clients, so, but what I seen was, you know, the captain was, would hook the fish and then he'd hand the, the reel to the, to the person, the reel in and, 
and then the mate would do the same thing. So it was just like a big rotation. So that's something that I don't do. I will help. And I tell people, hey, you know, your first hour with me is going to be learning how to do it. And some people look at me like, ah, you know, I'm going to catch, catch on to this. And I'm like, eh, you know, it, they can be really tricky. So, and I tell my clients, you're doing it right when you get the bite. You're doing it right when you get the bite. If you're not getting a bite, you're not doing it right. So, and then I'll step in and I'll catch one. And then they're like, okay, we believe you. And then they'll want to learn a little bit more. And then they'll, they'll, some guys have super big egos and then all of a sudden they're like, oh, maybe I should listen to the captain. And then all of a sudden it like, I see, I see shifts on the, on the boat, you know, and the guys really want to learn and they pick up on things really quick. And I'm very patient when it comes to that stuff because I, that's part of my job is to be as a charter boat fisherman is to be a teacher. So as far as the technique goes to catch fish. Okay, as far as the secrets go, eh, no. I have consulting courses for that and how to find spots. You can buy the courses. I, you know, my charter boat um, fishing experience does not include uh, secrets. <laughs> so, and, uh, and um, what's the word for it? Upping your game. That's, uh, it's like that seems to be the level up, seems to be the, seems to be the, um, the catchphrase nowadays. So, but anyways, there's a lot of different charters for people. If you want to go wahoo fishing and you don't want to reel in the fish, then there's, you know, guys that have 80 wides and two mates that can do it for you. And you can just, you know, watch the fish come overboard and grab a picture of the fish. And then, yeah, you know, then you caught it, you know, you paid for it and you should be able to take the fish home with you. So, and that's another thing you have to be careful is that it, do you own the fish? Okay. A lot of guys are making a living selling fish down here and you have to, before you book a trip, you have to make sure that you ask the captain, say, do I get the fish? If you want the fish and you may not want the fish. I mean, I had a lot of clients that don't want it. I, I don't sell anything. And, uh, really all I do is I donate the fish at the end of the day to the guys that my if clients don't want it. I give it to my, my boat cleaners and people that really, um, are appreciative of the food. Uh, I'll, I'll take um, some fresh fish for Melinda and I, but I don't sell any fish. Yeah, so if you're looking to like learn, there's charters for learning and you hands-on experience. And and then there's charters where you just go and you let the mates fish for you. And there's a lot of pressure on these guys. You know, they have, they're, they're in big, large marinas. They have to rack up fish. And they're dealing with the guy next to them. That's, you know, so there's a lot of shit that goes on in marinas that a lot of guys don't talk about. So, but I'm not afraid to talk about it. So, <laughs> cause that's what goes on. But, um, yeah. So it's like a sword fishing trip. Uh, sword fishing trips are mostly push button fishing trips. Uh, it's for the experience. The, the mate does a majority of the work. Unless you're into it for manual catch, which is crazy, if uh, um, congratulations to the guys that uh, put in the time and reeling up a swordfish manually, I have a, I honest to God, I think that's the greatest thing that somebody should do once in their lifetime is reel up a swordfish manually. That's something that I have not done. Uh, I have spent hours battling a blue blue marlin personally, and it's it's like. Oh my God, it's crazy. And driving the boat. But um, kudos to the guys that want to do that manually. I really, you know, think that's awesome. Uh, but, you know, I had a lot of clients that booked me. It's like, yeah, we went sword fishing. And yeah, it wasn't what we thought it was going to be. But we got one. It's not like they were super excited about it either. It's like, yeah, you know, they just did it, crossed it off their bucket list, caught the sword uh, with the push button. And yeah. So everybody's got their own. What I'm trying to get at, guys, is everybody's got their own thing and what they're looking for in a fishing charter. So I want you guys just to be aware there's so many different trips out there. If you just want to go on a boat ride and let the mates and stuff do it for you, you got to like know that that might be the way the charter boat captain operates and he doesn't tell you. So you got to ask questions. Ask questions, okay? Oh, and I'm just getting ready to wrap it up here. Uh, I want to give a shout out to my wife, Melinda. She, she launched her first book this week and it's really good. It, um, 
don't let all my stories go to waste because I got to tell you what it's there's some good stuff in there and I want you guys to uh, to read it. It's just not about couples. Uh, the name of the book is called um, Confidence Mastery for Couples. It's a roadmap to a more intimate relationship. Now, it's just not for couples, and a lot of the things that Melinda goes over in the book, I think a lot of people like whether you're a lot of people need to read. <laughs> so, and you get to learn a lot about my, my, <laughs> a lot about me personally and being a fishing captain's hard and having a relationship's hard and still being able to, um, manage things personally without going crazy. So anyway, so the book's available on amazon.com. And again, it's uh, Confidence Mastery for Couples is the name of the book. It's Roadmap to a More Intimate Relationship. So so make sure you give it a read. Uh, check out the reviews. The reviews are outstanding. I'm very, I'm very proud of Melinda. So uh, make sure if you want to give Melinda Van Fleet a follow, it's Melinda Van Fleet on Facebook. And get involved with my private Facebook group. Uh, it's the Good Karma Sport Fishing Podcast private group. Uh, that's where I release a lot of news. I put a lot of videos. Oh, speaking of videos, I started putting some some extremely short, unedited, raw videos on my YouTube channel. So I do have a YouTube channel, and it's just where a lot of my podcasts go. And with the podcast now, you can you know watch a couple videos that I'm putting up there, just some videos of my clients. And I've got thousands of hours of videos of my clients fishing. So, and of myself that I videoed over the years. So I'm just going to be throwing some quick clips up there because people want to see some clips of my clients fishing. There you go. It's they're going to be unedited, you know, a little bit of editing, raw, no music, nothing fancy, but just fish and stuff. And again, I'm not going to be putting a lot of effort into it. And to, to so for the whole paper click thing, so there won't be any damn hooking cooks except if I go to Dairy Queen and pick up my favorite chicken nuggets, uh, <laughs> which is the truth. That's my idea of a hooking cook: stopping at uh, Dairy Queen and picking myself up some some chicken nuggets at the end of the day with some extra honey mustard sauce. <laughs> That's the truth. So. Uh, that's all I got for today, guys. Uh, thanks for tuning in. Make sure you follow me on Instagram, uh, Good Karma Sport Fishing underscore FL underscore Keys. You can follow me, like I said, on Facebook in my in my private Facebook group. My private Facebook group is the Good Karma Sport Fishing Podcast. And also, too, if you're interested in getting involved in the rigging group, it's pretty badass. So I'm taking on, um, uh, you know, I can take on four new people, and that'll be it for a while so and i'm currently you know if you're interested you can email me at goodkarmaryan at gmail.com for more information about the group and we can discuss it thanks for tuning in guys and remember anytime you're fishing it's all good